Good evening, everyone. I hope all of you had a good day. The prompt I've decided to discuss today is the first one regarding whether I find future danger dangerousness risk assessment tools to be useful or accurate in the criminal justice system. Overall, I don't find risk assessment tools to be a convincing measure of predicting whether a criminal will commit another offense. This can be supported by the research article, Risk Assessment Tools in Criminal Justice and Forensic Psychiatry, published by the National Library of Medicine which states that more than half of individuals who have committed a crime and received a higher risk score were falsely classified because as they did not break the law again. This shows that the tool is not valid or reliable if more than half of a criminal sample is incorrectly identified. Additionally, I don't believe that risk assessment tools should be based on racial profiling, social economical status, or someone's ethnicity. For example, according to the Machine Bias article published by ProPublica, it showed that two people committed similar crimes of stealing items of similar monetary worth, but, but there was a significant difference in the risk scores between them. The higher the score, the more probable it was that the criminal would commit another offense again. One person was a white middle-aged man named Vernon Prater, who was charged with a shoplifting offense of stealing $86.35 worth of tools from a Home Depot. The other person was an 18-year-old African-American woman named Brisha Borden, who was arrested for petty theft for stealing a kid's bike and a scooter that it was estimated to be around $80. Therefore, both of them engaged in similar crimes in which they stole items worth similar prices. That's when I wondered... Um, sorry. The thing, the thing is that Brisha had a significantly larger risk score of eight, while Vernon had a lower risk score of three. That's when I wonder if the risk assessment tool uh, demonstrated racial disparities and focused on the physical characteristics of the suspect rather than on more important details as such as past criminal history record, the, the criminal record. To support this argument, the machine bias article also included that Vernon Prater had prior convictions and was arrested for two counts of armed robbery, which is a first degree felony, by the way and a one count of attempted armed robbery. While Brisha Burden had a past of being charged with four juvenile misdemeanors. Not only that, two years later, Vernon Prater was arrested again for a larger and more significant crime of stealing electronics multiple times from a warehouse. And it was like about more than thousands of dollars that he stole. And then he had to face like eight years in prison. This saying, Brisha, Brisha Borden did not commit any subsequent subsequent crimes in the next two years, yet she had a higher risk score of committing a crime in the future. This shows that risk assessment tools is not valid or reliable and cannot be proven to predict if a criminal is going to commit a crime again in the future. It also demonstrates that the risk assess it also demonstrates that the risk assessment tool showed higher risk scores for minority ethnic ethnic groups like an African American woman and could be considered racially discriminatory. On the other hand, there are aspects of a risk assessment tool that, if used correctly, can function in preventing future crimes. For example, according to the video of psychologists responsible for predicting violence, published by the HL, HLN News, the psychiatrist Dr. Henry Paul stated that we can learn from everyday citizens as they can be good assessors of criminals. In other words, instead of the police focusing on the race, age, gender, ethnicity, and other physical appearances to determine if a suspect will commit a crime. They should interview potential witnesses such as family members, friends, and neighbors who, ha who have had a close relationship to the criminal. They should also investigate the life experience the criminal, the individual has had in his early life to determine if he or she is acting out of trauma or as a call for help. Although if the assessment, although if the assessment of a criminal is done like this, it still does not predict the outcome of a criminal committing a crime again. It doesn't predict it. However, having connections with close people to criminals who are close people to criminals can help prevent them from reoffending. For example, according to a research study behind bars but connected to family published by the National Library of Medicine, it states that the odds of recid recidivism were 30.7% lower for those who visited at least once during the year, and that increased frequency of visitation result reduced the odds of recidivism. Thank you.